everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is project number two for this year's Easter series 2019. Now, those of you that watched last year's series will be probably saying now, more carrots. <laughs> I don't know what it is about carrots. I really like them. <laughs> I like them to eat, but I also think they're really cute and they are perfect for Easter projects. The inspiration for this has actually come just from this little image here and I'll show you and tell you more about that one in a moment. But basically this is a small crate or little basket. If you do go to last year's um, woven basket that i done, I'll link that up here, that has carrots in it as well but they are much bigger and a different style again. So I always like to bring you different ways of doing things so there should hopefully be something that someone will prefer or enjoy more than you know the other. So I'm going to make one more carrot for this one today and I'm going to make another basket and then I'm going to be making more carrots because these are going to be for two separate people. Inside are little red lint chocolates so I'll show you those when I fill up the other one. They are very easy to make they are just cones and then I've just made this kind of grass effect for the the leaves and then finish them with a bow. So when you open that bow out pours all of the eggs. Now I thought these are perfect if you're going to do an Easter egg hunt, if you've got your grandchildren round or it's a party. How nice would these be to give to each individual or maybe the winner gets to take the whole crate. I just think it's really cute. You don't have to have carrot on the front here, you can do anything you want. There is a brad behind that so it does move, so this obviously all moves here. And you may not want to make the carrots, you may just want to do the crate and um, you know, and fill it with something else. There is acetate behind this, so it's a really strong, nice little project to do. So that is what I'm going to show you. Okay, so this is the magazine that has inspired me to create that. So this is by House Couple Ditch. I love her, I follow her on Facebook. She's a fantastic illustrator, and she's brought this magazine out, which I purchased from her via her Etsy store. I will share the links all over on my blog. Um, I just love what she makes, I love her style, so when she said she was doing a magazine I jumped at the chance to get this and this is what's going to be featuring in a lot of my Easter tutorials going forward. So although today all I've used is this little carrot, you will see other things that will be popping up, but she just creates absolutely gorgeous images. So yeah, this is all I'm going to show you, I'm not going to show you inside, you'd have to purchase it if you want it, but I know a couple of you do already have this that I, you know, know through social media, other crafty friends, so yeah, hope you're enjoying it too. Then I'm going to be using more of the Paper Mania, if I get the glare off there, there we go, the clear acetate. This is the 12 by 12 it's just very strong, um, I actually found it again in Chaplin's, <laughs> so I've been featuring that a few times, it's just a local shop near me, but it was again that's about the same price I've seen it on Amazon. I think the one I've got on my Amazon storefront is six fifty or six ninety nine. So it, you know, we're all kind of in the same kind of um, area there in terms of price. So I think the last time when I got it from Trago Mills for three ninety nine, I think that was just a, a one off. So yeah, if you do get it, I love it. I think it's great and it's perfect for when you're doing those larger projects. But you can use normal A4 for this tutorial today. Okay, and then this is all what you're going to need. So I'm going to be making one carrot with you. <laughs> Sounds so funny. So I've got a piece of A5 orange cardstock, and then I've already gone and done this here, but I'm going to do it again on some white paper because obviously I don't want to waste that. That's the one I'm going to use. And then I've just cut out one of those images there. I'll just bring that up close so you can see how nice that is. So that's all ready. So to make the crate, I've got some brads there for my handle, and that's the handle there. So your base will be five by six and seven eighths of an inch okay and then you just want to score at half an inch on all four sides so half an inch half an inch half an inch and half an inch okay so just do that so that's all ready to go this is the acetate that i've got so you're going to need two pieces that are five by five and seven eighths of an inch so that's two pieces to go on the front and the back and then on the sides you're going to need four by five, two pieces, okay? Then for your side, let's call them hinges, so these bits here, and they are slightly higher, just ever so slightly, because when you look at a crate, you've always got a higher piece. I've not gone too high with mine, if you can if you want, but I've just gone off enough, and you can see there, just where it comes off slightly, okay? So that is meant to be there. So these are one by five and one eighth, so you can see there how I've gone up slightly. Along the one inch side you want to score at half an inch, fold and burnish, and then I've just gone ahead and I've popped double sided tape behind all of those, so they're ready to go. Then for your side slats, so the wooden slat effect, you're going to need eight pieces. These are all one inch wide 
and then they're four inches in length. Okay, so you'll need eight pieces. And again, I've gone over and already prepared these with the double-sided tape. I'm using the red tape because I'm sticking it against acetate, so I just find this works really well. And then for your front and back slats, you need eight, and these are five and seven eighths of an inch by one inch. And again, you can see there, I've prepared the backs of all of those. For the handle, I've just cut a piece of one inch by the full length of my A4 craft card. This craft card is the Do Crafts Paper Mania craft card. It's the craft card I always use, and I will share the links, and I do believe it's over on my Amazon storefront on the papers I use section. Okay, again, you can find that link just in the video description below. For this piece here for your grass trim, it's entirely up to you because when I show you how to make the cone, everybody's cone is going to be a different size. Not one of my cones are the same size, but I like that because carrots aren't all the same. So, But in terms of the grass inside, the diameter is roughly between two and a quarter and two and a half. That's how I've done them. So this was just a piece of scrap that I had, which is 12 inches in length. I've stuck with the same three and a half inches roughly in height for all of them. I just think that gives you, because by the time you tie it all in, you know, I just think that gives you a nice height for your carrot. So, yeah, but again, you may want to shrink that down. If you're doing an even bigger carrot, then you might want it, high, you know, taller. If you're doing a smaller version, then again, you'd want to go smaller. But the length, A4 will be fine, but we're actually, you're probably going to end up cutting down to maybe as much as seven. You can't, I don't think I could get it any shorter than that. But again, when we get to that, I will show you. Okay, so first of all, I want to make up the crate. So you've just done all your score lines and now you want to just fold and burnish all of those. So we've just fold and burnished our score lines and then you want to remove all of those squares from each corner. So take them out completely. We're not making a tray or a box base in the usual way because we're going to be sticking the acetate and the hinges. That's what creates the the corners for everything for this one so it's really easy now I'm actually going to fold all of mine up that way okay so you're going to have that effect what's going to happen is all of the acetate so you've got your side pieces which will fit in like so and then you've got your front and your back are going to go and they're all going to go inside the tray Okay, so what you want to do is I'm just going to pop some red tape inside these four little tabs. So I've just got my red tape. I'm coming down to the thinner ones now. I need to order some more. Again, I order this through every crafts a pound. You get 23 rolls for £10 and they do last me quite a while because obviously I flip between different adhesives. I don't just use this one. So I do find they last me a long time. But again, I will share those links. So I'm just going to pop this on all four sides. Okay, just go around and make sure the red tape's stuck down nicely. Take off your backing and grab one of your pieces of acetate, the shorter side for the side pieces. Butt it right, if you lie it inside, okay, like this, butt it right up to this fold, this score line. Make sure it's within these score lines here so it should lie flush in that section and fold that piece right over. And then lift it up and you see now we've got one of our sides coming together so again I'm going to go and do this one here pop the whole piece inside don't mind if it comes over the the side there because it is taller and then when it's all nice and straight fold that right over and then bring it up and those two should meet like that okay so you can see now how we're starting to get our lovely little box here or crate so now I'm just going to do these other two Okay, so there already we've got our four sides, so now when we bring it all up, you'll start to see this shape, all right? The corners that you've done, so these ones that you scored, they're gonna go on last, so I'm gonna keep them to one side. And now it's entirely up to you what side you wanna start on first. You might wanna start on your front and backs or your sides. I'm gonna start on this one. So you wanna flip the whole thing over now, okay? Um, I'm gonna start with my larger one here. So I'm going to grab one of those larger, the large eight strips. So let's keep all those here for the minute. So that's my handle. And then we can keep everything together. Uh, oh, no, that's a short one. Right, so there we go. I've got my two piles. It's my short and the long ones. So I'm just going to take the backing off. And 
remember this is on the outside now so this first piece you want to stick over this tab and right up to that base score line so if I stick that down and use that as your guide grab another long one and stick this one on the very top okay and then this one you're going to stick giving yourself about three-eighths of an inch gap. Now if you want to grab the other one without taking the backing off and lie that down there just so you know you're getting the same gap but because I've already made one I already know what I'm doing. Okay is that one. So I guess the only thing you want to make sure you get right with this one is the same gap. You want it to be consistent all the way around because if I show you this one if you look you can see they match up. I've got the same acetate gap on all of them. So if you would rather use your ruler and do it that way then that's fine. I'm going to flip it round and I'm going to do the same on this one. And then you want to do exactly the same thing on the sides. So again start from with that one over there, one at the top and then the same gap Okay, so do that on both your side pieces. Okay, so that is now what you should have. So when you bring up now your side, can you see how lovely your crate comes together? Looks really, really cool. Now, if you don't have acetate, you don't have to use it because what you can do is stick, grab that out there, when you have this piece here you could stick these four pieces to this edge here with the same gap so you imagine you've got that piece stuck like that and then stick the next sides to it like so and so on and so forth and still just stick it to the base like I did so there is a way to do it without the acetate as well. So next moving on now to those side pieces you just want to remove the backing I always like to do one at a time you also don't have to use craft card, you could use coloured card for this, so there's lots of ways to change it up. It'll look nice for Christmas as well. Now remember it's not, it's going to be slightly taller because it's supposed to be, so I'm just going to butt it up to that score line, like so. Making sure you've got that little bit coming over the top. Bring up the next side. The first one's always a bit fiddly, once you've done the first one and the the kind of box starts to take its shape it's easier to do the rest like so and flip it over and just go in there and just all of that acetate that you've you know stuck down all of the sticky tape sorry just make sure it's all stuck down you'll see there and it's nice and neat inside looks really tidy so that's that one and you should have that little overhang from the top which just gives it a little bit of character and again just do that now on your other three corners And there is your crate. How lovely is that? It's a really decent size. This one measures at six by four when finished or just over four. Now you don't need to add a handle. If you want to just keep it like this you can because that is exactly how a crate looks. I've added the handle because I'm giving it as a gift so I just thought it was nice for them to carry but if you're maybe using yours more of a decorative piece or as a centerpiece maybe on your Easter table and it's everybody's little favours after their dinner then you may not need to have the handle. Okay so that's that piece done so now we can move on and make the carrot. Okay so this is a piece of A5 cardstock which measures five and five eighths by eight and a quarter okay so it's just a four cut in half now there are lots of ways to do a cone if you're using paper it will be much easier this is a cardstock this is about 200 200 I don't know 200 something <laughs> you can hear it it's a nice um, cardstock so I think it was it was that from the packs I shared last week. I can't remember what I said they were, but anyway. So you just want to kind of curl the cardstock. Now it's hard for me to really give a measurement because you can make a cone by cutting a circle and then cut up into the middle of the circle and then pull it around. You can do that with this, but the way I'm doing it, I want quite a long length of this. So yeah, you see what I do and then you can decide yourself. I've just curled that cardstock just to make it a bit easier for me to roll. And I'm just going to run this red tape along the short side. 
definitely so. I'll take the backing off. Now, because I'm now onto my fifth one of these, I've kind of, you know, mastered how I want mine. But basically what you want to do is start turning this, but keeping it right up this corner here. This is going to fold around and stick down. And you can see straight away I've got my comb. So what I want to do first of all is I'm just kind of really kind of curling the bottom bit around there. Can you see? And I want to stick that bit first. Okay, like so. So that is now stuck down. You can see what I've done. And then I can pull this piece as big as I want. I could go right around there and make one of those big like ice cream kind of waffle styles or I can bring it around. I go about halfway. Like I said, it doesn't matter that they're all different. It gives this character, it's nice that they are slightly different. So if you're looking for an exact, then, well, you're gonna have to measure each one. Where is my, oh, that's what I used. I'm just grabbing my long scissors because these are so long and pointy. I could get them right in just to stick. Get right down in there and make sure that tape has stuck right down, like so. So that's what I've been doing. That's how I've been making my cones and I'm really pleased with how they turned out. Then to save some of this cardstock, if you just kind of cut like so, and then I just cut really neatly down along that piece. And I can go in a little bit tighter there actually. And that saves, we're faffing about with measurements and then you can just go around and kind of shape it a bit better. And then to just kind of tidy up the top, you just want to start cutting around like so. You are going to see this, you do want to make sure, there we go, I'm pretty pleased with that and there's my ice cream cone. So again, if you want to make ice creams, then that's the perfect way to do it. You want to make one of those hats. You can have a little gnome hat there. So but that's, yeah, it's worked for me. So see what you think. Then that one measures, let me just tell you what I come in there. So yeah, that one's two and a quarter. And that's roughly where I've been. Two, two and a quarter. And I think one of them is two and a half, but they all look great. So that's that piece. Then with your grass, what you want to do, actually, let me just grab some scrap. Okay, this is just a piece of scrap that I've got. So I gave you the width, which was three and a half, okay? And then whatever length, you don't want to be any shorter than seven inches. And then you just want to, I'm just using this scoreboard here. You want to score at half an inch all down one of those sides, okay? So you're scoring down the long side, like so. And then to speed up the process, I use these, which are the veg vegetable scissors. These are also on my Amazon storefront. They have a green handle. I do have the green handle and the blue. And all you want to do is cut. You can't see the score line, but if I just fold it, there's the score line that I've just created. Okay, you're just cutting up to that. Bearing in mind yours will be longer here. This is just a scrap. And you're just cutting like so. And this just makes life much easier and quicker. So if you do want to make a lot of these, I would say get these scissors, otherwise, you're at, you're at, you're at, otherwise your hands will ache. And you can see there just how quickly, and you get a nice consistent width for each of those kind of tassel trim pieces there, like so. Okay, so that then gives you this. Great for making headbands as well, and grass for any card designs, so it's just really easy to do. What I would do is then roll it up. This is obviously longer than you need, but if you're making smaller carrots, you'd probably get two out of this. Pop it inside the carrot, and then I'm just gonna bring it around until I can see where I need it to be. So you just want it to stick all on the inside and overlap about half an inch. So I can see where that's gonna overlap, which is just here. And I'm gonna just cut Oh gosh, I'm just going to cut a little bit further, like so. So now that will go over and sit perfectly in there. So you're going to stick your tape on the outer side. And I'm going to hug the score line. So now I've just trimmed off the excess, just leaving enough where that tape is. Take your backing off. Okay, and then start from the seam on the back, kind of 
hold that piece there with one finger. It's a little bit fiddly, but once you kind of get the hang of it, once you've done a few, then it's fine. And just start working around, just making sure that score line runs all the way around the top of the carrot. And then you'll get right to the edge and it joins up perfectly. Pop it down and again with my bone folder, just go in, make sure it's all nicely stuck down. Okay, and then you can just scrunch that all together and there's your carrot. How cool is that? I love them. Okay, so then we can fill it with some treats. So this is what I'm filling it with. These fit perfectly. I can fit 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So I think that's a really nice treat and these are those lovely Lindor chocolates. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, ten. Okay, you can maybe get a couple more in there as well if you want, but I just found ten was a nice amount. And then bring it all together. I've just got some of this floss, fancy floss, easy sew, baker's twine, whatever, it's got loads of names. Trim off some of that. Keep my seam at the back. And then you just want to bring this around. Tie it really tightly. Okay, don't worry thinking you're going to squash the card, you don't because there's so much in there, it kind of all supports itself. And then just tie a nice little bow, again you might want to put little name tags on these if you're giving them individually, mine's all going to the same person so I don't need to worry about that. Tidy that up a little bit and then just push it down a bit and then if you want to curl these a bit more or whatever, I like them actually quite straight, you just kind of move them around a little bit like so. And there's your carrots. That's that now done. Get rid of that and then we can finish off our crate. So you've got your handle piece that we showed earlier. Again just curve that and then I want to make a hole in the middle of this top one. This is just if you want to do the handle. There's that one. Flip it over. If you want to measure you can. I'm just going to eyeball the centre there and then again mark the centre of this like so. I've got these huge brads here. The green one I'm actually going to use for the front and cover with my little carrot tag and keep the cream. No, maybe I should have the, no, I'll have the green at the back actually and cover the cream. Green at the back, cover the cream. That was, they sound the same. Green and cream. Right. Like so. How cute. Cute, cute, cute. And this one here I'm going to stick with my glue gun, so I'm just going to pop a little bead of glue in the centre and then just stick that there like so. So that all still moves, I think it looks really nice. And then the inside, I shared this in one of my what did I get tutorials a couple of weeks ago, but this is just some like straw, orange kind of straw. I'm going to pop that in there, but there is a few like loose bits, so I don't want to take it out now because it goes everywhere, so I want to do that off camera, but that will go all inside there, ready for the carrots to So now I can add that one in there to complete that one. I think five's nice for this, if you're doing the sizes that I'm doing, bring that up. How cute, love it. You can put their name on there, there's just loads of ways to personalise it. I like things quite simple um, and more decorative as well, so that's going to look nice now by like the Easter tree, the twig tree kind of thing. I think it looked lovely. And there's that one there, empty. So I hope you like it. I hope I've inspired you to go and make lots of carrots. <laughs> There's something about them. I just think they're really cute. Um, I will link in, like I said, that one. And the tutorial will be at the end as well. So you can check it out. You may want to have the bigger crate from last year and fill it with lots of these for a party or something. So you might want to just use this crate and pop Easter eggs in it. So yeah, loads of ways to use this. Hopefully you enjoy it and you give it a go. As always, remember to share it over on Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page. And I will be back on Sunday with a scrapbook layout and Monday with another Easter tutorial. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Bye.